Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and we are talking about the Load Runner tutorials. As a part of today's episode, we are actually getting into something very important about automation that is called as transaction. Now transaction is basically defined as set of actions which is done in order to complete a particular task. Now a task can be anything. It could be withdrawing money from ATM, it could be booking a flight or any sort of thing which you would basically perform. But each of these actions, that is this task, requires some set of actions by the user to be performed. But sometimes it becomes very important for us to identify that what action a user was performing while this exactly went wrong. Like when it comes to response time, resource utilization, and if you just have a generic script end to end, it becomes quite uh, difficult to debug that script or identify the area where exactly the loophole exists. Now that's where the transaction will be very critical in order to identify the script and make use of it. So today in our tutorial we will be understanding how to make use of transaction in our scripts of Eugen and how does that help you in order to identify the flaws in your script and help you to debug it at any point of time. Well, let's get started and understand more about the same in today's tutorial. Part of this tutorial, we will be understanding about transactions in automation. Here, we will understand what is transaction, what is a transaction time, and how to add transaction statements to the script. In order to get started, the very first thing is of course to define what a transaction is all about. A transaction is technically defined as set of actions performed in order to complete a task. Now a task can be anything as I just told you earlier that it can be about withdrawing money from an ATM machine, it could be about making a call, it could be about booking a flight, it could be about cancelling a flight or doing any sort of activities. It might be even about shopping on a particular web page or e-commerce website. Now no matter what you are talking about this is called as a transaction. But each of these transactions involves set of actions by the user in order to complete that transaction. Now why are we talking about transaction? Because transaction time becomes important for us when we talk about automation. Don't forget that one of the benefits of automation is being more accurate and precise. And measuring the transaction time will help you to determine that how long each of your vUser or your user has taken in order to perform that activity. Because sometimes it varies user to user. Some users complete an activity in 5 seconds, some of them take 10 seconds to do the same job. And that's where the performance engineering comes into picture. We want to make sure that why the other user took slightly longer than the first user in order to perform the same transaction with same set of actors. So that's where we'll be understanding today that how to make use of transactions in our script. In order to insert a transaction step into your script in VueGen, all you need to do is go to design and select insert in script and there you have the options of start transaction and end transaction. It's just like a loop like for loop or if condition or do while or while anything. Just the same way you start a transaction which you apply in the script must be ended as well. And there's a simple syntax to be followed. But before that I would like to show you that what kind of transactions we can actually have. For example, if I come to vUser init where you know that we are capturing the events for launch and login. Now if I want to call this entire thing as a transaction, all I need to do is just come above the function which is to launch and the login both. So just come before one line to that and go to design, insert in script, start transaction. The syntax of start transaction is lr underscore start underscore transaction followed by the name of the transaction for example launch now i can give it anything whatever i prefer to it's a user defined name so you can define it as anything what you want to define i'm just keeping it user friendly so that you find it useful to remember and the same thing has to be closed at the end of it now if in case i go again to use the design option in certain script and transaction it will automatically detect that you started a transaction and is going to close that. The syntax for ending a transaction is lr underscore end underscore transaction followed by the same name which you used during the launch or during the start of the transaction. It must be same and case sensitive. If in case you go with anything wrong with the case sensitive or spelling mistake, it will be a type mismatch error during the runtime. 
Now it's not mandatory that you should have only one transaction for a launch and login. In case you want to have independent transactions, you can make use of it. The more number of transactions you have, the more precise you have the data. But it does not mean that for every single step you add transactions because that becomes more complicated and adds additional time to execution. Also, just quickly to do the same thing again with the uh, action part as well, I would like to show you, for example, this function or this API function is basically to select a flight or search for a particular flight from a particular destination to a particular, oh, sorry, from origin to the destination. Now, this can also be called as a transaction. Now, let's try doing the other way around, like typing it ourselves. LR underscore start underscore transaction. Okay. And it, if it is correct, it will detect and show in the orange color and just put the name of it, for example, fly. And that should be in the double quotes. As soon as you enter the complete syntax, it picks it up automatically and showcases here. Similarly, if you just want to go it, you can complete it using the other option as well. Okay. So that does not detect it. As far as I'm using a semicolon here, don't forget it's a C programming. Let's try one more time. Sorry, it was not to start the transaction. It was end transaction. Now, can you see that just because I had a syntax issue, it could not detect it, but this time it detected the same thing. So let's put it as a uh, fly, which is our transaction. So that's it. So this is that simple. You can basically make use of it. And now if I want, I can just replay this particular script. But I think for the last session, I used a runtime setting to run it for several iteration. So I'm just going to make it for one iteration so that we can save some of our time. And just click on save. Come back to any of the action because you know that it starts from the beginning. Click on replay. And we're just going to replay and showcase you the transition time for each and everything what we have added. To do that, once you complete your execution, you just have to expand the output pane and come to the uh, steps here, the outcome steps. For example, here you can see during views or init, there was a transaction launch started. And at the end, transaction launch ended with a pass status. That means all the activities were performed as well as I can see the duration. That means 1.6643 seconds were used and wasted time is 1.0061. This 1.0061 as wasted time means that the time taken to execute this line itself. So now what we understand from here is that the transition time, which is the duration here, is the measurement of the time taken by these lines, which are within the transaction statements. It does not include the time taken by the transaction statements itself to get executed. And that's what is represented by wasted time. That means it has taken 1.0061 seconds to execute the transaction statements alone. So it is something to worry about. Anyways, let's look at the action part. Again, in action, I had a transaction called as fly and the transaction ended with status pass and the duration was 0 0.3960 and 0 0.1486 was the wasted time. So this is how you make use of transaction time to identify. And it's just not about me measuring the transaction time. And during the controller, when you run a load scenario, it would help you to identify based on the transactions that which API function failed to respond. If in case you have a performance degradation and you have a higher response time. So the transaction will help you to debug your script more better and identify the area where you need to rework in order to improvise the same. We can also add this transaction using the recording mode. And all you need to do is just start the recording and use the option start uh, transaction and end transaction. That I will show with the recording options altogether when I come to the upcoming tutorials. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.